All right. So we're starting to record this session, and uh, just an official welcome for those watching on the link. Um, it's been some busy days, and we appreciate you joining this uh, this webinar, this live stream, so that we can learn a little bit more about the product called Google Jamboard. It is something that um, has been hanging around just a little bit, and then once the Learn at Home phase hit um, after March break last this past spring, it was something that people latched onto a little bit more. And so, in essence, what it is, is a, a whiteboard, a digital whiteboard. And uh, we'll dig into a little bit what, of what the features are of that. Like I mentioned, uh, my name is Bill Corcoran. I'm a coordinator with Learning Technologies um, on the pedagogical and academic side. So I do my best with um, the technical questions, but um, uh, I am a teacher at heart, and we were trying about how do we purposely use these tools and support us across the system. I work with an awesome team of consultants, and um, we've done our best over the last couple of days to um, share that information out of who your family of schools learning technologies consultant is. And uh, that team is very awesome, and they will get back to you and support you as all as we all will. Um, so we do have Catherine Wake and Steph Pearson and Tara Potter as part of our LT consultant team, um, which will be here to support you, of course, if you have any questions further. To this and of course you can reach out to me but they will be your first entry point in partnership okay so google jamboard um, i did allude to it in just a few seconds is that essentially it is a whiteboard and the whiteboard means is that imagine that you had um, a physical whiteboard in front of you where you could just write on and add little things but this is brought into the digital scope and so whether you are um, using this in your classroom in person or if you are using this as a virtual academy teacher, um, they both have applications. So I'm going to try to show you a couple of ways in which I've seen people use it. And, um, and then you can use your professional judgment as to thinking about how you might use it with your own um, students and your own learning. Because if you're thinking to yourself during this, uh, during this live stream that I could use it that way, then you probably can. Um, so it is really up to your own uh, your own creativity as we go forward with it. So you may be wondering if you're, how do we get into uh, Google Jamboard? And uh, there is a tie to Google Drive, which you will see when we create um, different Jamboards or Jams, they will end up in Google Drive. You may also wonder as we go through what the kind of difference is between Jamboard and what you might think of as a uh, Google Slides, if you're very familiar with that. And I think you'll see, as we, if you were familiar with Google Slides, the differences of what um, Jamboard can offer in terms of being able to be creative on the slide and in, and in the moment. But there are some comparables for sure. So you would always think of the, um, the end goal. What is it that you want? Are you just conveying information? Are you sharing information? Or are you trying to interact with what you're sharing? So that, that would kind of be the parallels for what I would say the differences between um, Google Jamboard and Google Slides, but you will notice as we go through the first part, I'm going to go over just an overview of one, how do you um, get into it? And then two, what is it? Like just an overview of a run through of what the tool offers. And then I'll pause there and then we'll switch over to some examples that I've seen through the board. But before we do that, as always, um, we will ground ourselves um, in acknowledging um, the land that we that we are learning and praying on, and of course, uh, a little moment to reflect and, and pray before we get moving. So first of all, um, as always, our board respectfully acknowledges that we are located on the ancestral, traditional, and unceded indigenous territory of the Algonquin peoples, of whose territory we pray, learn, play, and work. One of the biggest uh, um, things that have been brought forward through uh, I've, at the CLL, which is where all the principals and the leaders come together. And there was a video, and much might have been shown at your own staff meetings as well, of just breathe. And that was the perfect word for me in the moment. And so I will take a few moments to, to pause and for us to ground ourselves um, as, a, as a Catholic community, as a community of learners that support each other. So we'll, so we'll do that, and um, we'll think of some intentions, some, some prayers, and just just breathe and we'll come back and we'll start the rest of this piece. Okay. 
take a deep breath. Inhale, I'll hold it. And exhale. If you need to do another one, please do that. All right. Okay. So I am going to move on with uh, Google Jamboard. So again, thank you for, for coming and joining with us today. We know how hectic it, hectic it is in, in your schools, and we appreciate learning together. First of all, so how do we get to Google uh, Jamboard? Um, with anything within Google, everything is the product.google.com. So if you wanted to go to slides, it'd be slides.google.com, or Gmail, it'd be um, mail.google.com or drive.google.com. In this case, it's um, jamboard.google.com is the easiest way that I remember. And then I also, when we get there, if you don't have your bookmarks bar showing, you can show your bookmarks bar, which is the three dots. And then bookmarks, show bookmarks bar, which is this tab. And so what I'm going to do right here is I'm just going to make sure I click on it so I can click off and click back on, or I can highlight it and just drop it um, right into one of the pieces. And I can remove the text, so just by that. So that's one workflow I get there myself, is just having it in my bookmarks bar. But you may have a different workflow for yourself, so that's OK. So what you see right now is it's filtered to recent jams, owned by anyone. So I'm going to flip it to owned by me. And you can change the way it, it looks up here just by the grid view. So a lot of features that are very similar um, to what you see already in, Go in Google Drive. So that shouldn't be anything too new, um, but uh, you can just make any preference of. And then here, last modified, last modified by me, last opened by me. So you can continue to um, filter as well. It gives you different views. So that's all preferential as you go through. Right now, I'm going to click on the plus button at the bottom, which is a familiar icon um, for us in some of the products, especially if you are uh, using mobile sometimes. But in Google Drive, it'd be the same as going to File, New, uh, copy, but that plus button is familiar in a lot of Google products. When I click on New Jam, it's going to open um, a jam of Jamboard. You may see references sometimes to um, Jamboards, actual Jamboards, kind of like smart boards in a sense. Uh, um, we do not have those in our system, but we have the access to essentially the software that. Um, suits our needs and purpose. So even if we are projecting it, it is, can be on there. But the board itself um, is not part of this, this package. So if you see it anywhere, we're just focusing on the, on the software. So first of all, I'm going to give it all a title, webinar test jam. OK. You will notice that there are some options. I'm just going to go across the top and give us a little overview of what Jamboard is. And so right now, we can see that there is one. And I can expand the frame bar. And what this is is this is going to give you your view of more than just one jam. I'm only seeing one page of this one jam. And so um, I can make more uh, more pages when I do that and more uh, when, right here, what they call it, uh, you can duplicate it. So we're going to get into that piece in, in a moment. And then as we go across, um, we'll get to these pe uh, pieces afterwards which is the option to rename it, to make a copy, and, and so forth. But that's, that's not the immediate piece that we need to worry about. We will talk about how do you share it. And the news is that you can um, drop uh, this into a workspace in different formats and, um, and use it as we would in terms of making copies for students or groups or um, as, a, as, a, as a link. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about, about what that looks like um, coming up in just a few moments. But in terms of the background, there are, as I continue to go across, here is the background option. So right now, we are on um, just a plain, just white background. You can change the background to have some dots of some grids, grid paper. You can use it as lines and put text on there with, a, with the text feature over here. Um, you have your grid paper. The grid paper with different contrast, and then some different color backgrounds right now. Now, currently, um, it's it's not too complex. So there's not a million backgrounds, and there's not a lot of colors for the background. There is some creativity, but it is pretty it is pretty basic. But 
it does a lot of things that are, are pretty neat. So a lot of people like that um, you would do it. If you wanted to just convey information and change the background and have lots of text and, and be able to do this and that, like you're familiar with in Google Slides, then that, that might be the place for, for that. So as I continue going, oh, that's where I said open on Jamboard. We do not have physical Jamboard, so this one is more um, something that would be obsolete for us. But for the rest of this, uh, examples would be would be there for you to, to look at. On the left-hand side, we're now going over just a quick review. Here's a pen feature, an eraser feature, select. So that's like returning to just your cursor to be able to move and click and drag stuff. Here's a sticky note, which would be the equivalent of having like a post-it or a sticky note, physical sticky note like this, just plopping it on um, the, the Jamboard page, which you have here. The add image, which um, I'll go through, which is uh, grabbing items from your drive or from um, the options that are provided here. Circles, so that in here on here we have different shapes, and then the text box and a laser, a laser pointer. So let's let's go through some of those features as to what those basics are, and we can go from there. So I do have, um, if you were just on your on your Chromebook or on your uh, laptop, and you have the touch screen. You could absolutely just put your hand up and use some of these features on the screen um, by using um, your, your finger or the stylus if you had one going. Um, you can absolutely uh, use different aspects of it. But for sure, the, your mouse and cursor and trackpad works. And, and then touching that screen with your, your, with your finger um, is good. But I'm on a couple screens right now. And um, so right now, I'm just going to use my, my mouse and uh, my trackpad to move it in. So this is a pen. And if I click on the pen, I can give more options. So I can change the kind of uh, into a marker. I can change it into a highlighter, and I can change it into a brush. So we've seen those those features um, in different softwares that we've used before. And so right now, I'll start with the pen, and I'll start with the black. And if I just start writing, I can write there. And it's just I'm using the mouse, so it's not as fluid. Um, I can change it to a marker, and you can see that I can say, hello. And I like myself when I'm actually touching the screen to be able to, uh, to be able to do that. And what I'm looking at right now is my monitor, so I can't easily do that. So using, using the, so your, your finger on your, on your screen, on your computer screen or a Chromebook screen, Nice and nice and fluid. You can use it to, to move your finger and make sure it's all good. And here, um, highlighter. So then you might take a different color. You can see that it's um, if you go over it, just it's more straight. Kind of leaves a little transition, almost like it's bleeding a little bit on the paper, like it normally would. So if I want, to do, I know as you overlap, it gets darker a little bit, and so that's totally up to you. Um, and then here, you can see that we're on the last one, which is the brush. And so the brush is just a little bit more faint, um, a little bit more wide than the other ones. So those are our options right there, and are all options that um, yourself or if you share this with um, with your students, which is which the goal for, for learning activities, it's um, helpful to be able to, um, to use and to access. And we go here, eraser. Um, there is not any different uh, size erasers right now, and I have we can clear the frame, which is everything, um, which and also, but that takes a lot of the text. But here, this is more, and you can't make the eraser bigger right now, so it is more monotonous if you wanted to do something. But if I wanted to, I could uh, clear the frame, and of course, you have the undo um, and um, redo uh, features as well, in case you did that. As I move forward, I'm going to. Um, Click on um, sticky note, and uh, if I click on sticky note, something will pop up, and it might be something where you're writing a name. For now, I'm just going to uh, write a thought on here. It could be a name of a student. It could be a prompt. Um, it could be something here. And of course, when you click on it, you can drag. So I'm off of it. I click on it, and then you get the little um, compass navigation bar and move it across. Up here, you can angle them, which is nice. Um, and you can see that that's the top left corner. You can, you, it changes from that kind of toggle navigation to the like across. 
and uh, and looking like you can move it. You can grab either corner as you would to resize um, a picture in some of your items. And then under the three um, dots, you can duplicate or you can edit. So you can edit by the text by double clicking on it, which is nice, and you can change the colors. There are, again, those just basic colors and not too many more, and I could change the color. And if I click once to get the three dots, and then I could duplicate it if I wanted to. So I have that another sticky note, and I could change the color if I wanted to by double clicking on it and changing the color and putting it on there. And if I wanted to change the text again, I could have put um, another bot or prompt. So that's the sticky note. And we'll talk about applications of what that could look like in, in just a few moments. As we continue to go through, that was the sticky note uh, feature. And you have shortcuts there. Add image brings up a box of Google Drive, Google Image Search. And so these ones are the free share. So if on here I wanted to put um, Parliament Buildings, um, Building Canada, Ottawa, Canada. All these images are already uh, used for um, search that we can, and we have license to use uh, because the owner has uh, done so. So I'm going to just choose this image and put that in. So I'm OK to use this as we go through. And again, I can resize it by grabbing the bottom, move it around. I can angle it, and I can duplicate it, or I can delete it. And I can already, and what it means by order is that if I bring it here to the front, it will overlap. Um, the image is in front, but if I keep on putting new, like a new sticky note uh, on top, it may, uh, if I duplicate this one, it may go over top of it. So if I want this to be over top of that, I would take the three and the order and bring to the front, and then it's over top. So everything that's, it's kind of, um, in this instance, every time I put a layer, you kind of build on top of each layer until you tell that, that specific item to be in a different place. And so in this case, um, I could bring it forward. In this case, send back one. And you can kind of place it in between for what we need to, what we need to look at. So of course, we can continue to add an image from our Google Drive if we had it there, which is no different. And then Photos, which would link to your Google, Google Photos as well. So you can, you can look at different types here, photo clip arts, line drawings, um, and uh, and put it into your to your Jamboard, into your Jam page, which is great. I'm going to, um, this one's getting busy, but I just want to keep this one slide here for, for you to see that we're building a little bit more. So here is a circle. So if I click on the shape, and now we're under Add Image, if I go on here, it will add a circle, and then I can move it. You can see you get the same features as, as um, to angle it in a circle it wouldn't make much of a difference. And same the order of pieces. If I click on the little arrow, or kind of looks like a chevron, but a little arrow next to it, I can open up the shapes, and you get different shapes um, that you can create. And then here, so some people like the arrows there. Look at here, and that's, that's where it's looking. As you highlight um, an image, it comes out with uh, a shape that you've created. Up at the top, you can say, here's the border color. So you could make it red. You could also um, fill it as, as red. So that showed up at the top of the bar when I clicked on an item. So therefore, if I click on the circle, I could go up and change the border color to this and then put a different color in. So again, basic colors, but um, it, do, it does look a bit better than having a um, just monotone, monochromatic kind of black and white shape as well. So I can move those up, just move some things around. You can see how easy it is to kind of move things around on your uh, piece. I'm being more uh, just random at the moment. And then here's a text box. So if you put a text box in, you can say, here's my text or instruction. And right here, of course, just like the pictures you have, get the text bigger by dragging. There is no, you can see at the top, there is some different uh, font sizes by choosing whether it's normal, a subtitle, a title, or a display. 
um, in that case. And uh, you can make it bigger that way, but there's not um, like 11 point, 12 point font. So you can make it bigger either by grabbing and dragging it. If you extend it this way, it's gonna keep the text the same size, um, but just give you it in a different format by moving it so you can move it left and right. And of course you can change it again on that piece or extend it and make it bigger that way. In the text box, you can align it in the center, which is nice. Everything keeps it evolving a little bit with Jamboard um, before that. And then of course in here, you can change the, the color of the text with your uh, different options. And in, it, you would use white, I guess, if uh, the background was, was darker or on top of um, an image or something like that. The last option here is the laser. And the laser piece is, is handy um, if you are, you know, if you're doing something virtually or you're, you're sitting at your computer casting in a class or you're LinkedIn and projecting on, on your smart board or on your screen, um, because you could use this just like a laser pointer. You used to get the ones with the batteries and you or in the remote control and you, you kind of shine it up there. So this laser piece, actually, you can see that you can, if you click while holding this, it will kind of leave like a little trail. So you could, you could be speaking, here's my text or instruction. Please read this first and then go over to the sticky note or the post-it and, uh, and then write a thought and then go uh, look at this video, this uh, image and tell me what you think about uh, what, what it makes you feel like when you do that. So that just little piece instead of me like, oh, it's over here or kind of standing up and pointing at it, especially if you're virtual, um, could also be a, a, a nice prompt for um, student looking at this, or even colleagues if you are, are using it with it. So I like the laser pointer. I don't use it all the time, but definitely if I'm getting into the point of giving instructions or elab elaborating on instructions, I definitely um, do that. Okay, so that's the toolbar on the left-hand side. We haven't gone too far yet in terms of what it looks like to then, okay, well maybe this actual, this first page here of my jam, um, could be some sort of master. What if I wanted to have this on multiple slides? What if I wanted to have multiple uh, pages in my jam here to, to introduce my class to an activity or um, to give them a learning activity individually um, as making a copy in a PARA workspace? The last thing we didn't dig into really up was um, up here under create frame. So I've, I've kind of, um, been using a lot of words right now, and uh, some on purpose and some not to describe page, slide. I've used all those words, and some are me learning to use the proper terminology, and some are just thinking, well, okay, connecting with what some language that we're used to. So in a, in a Google Jam of Jamboard, so the Jam, this is the webinar test Jam, these are frames, so you, I've created one frame in front of you. So your frame could be a master or it could just be uh, a prompt or something like that. And you, of course, it's all up to your learning activity as to what it is. Is it for one student? Is it for your whole class to collaborate on? Um, and what does, that, what does that look like for you? So if I create a frame just by clicking on the, um, the Chevron, it will open up another frame and it's completely, uh, completely blank. And so I can continue to use that if I was, uh, a teacher modeling something in the moment, I could just be just using this as a virtual whiteboard while I'm talking, just like I would to write on um, a, a, a smart board or writing on a um, one of our whiteboards that we have in the system. And if we want that to be digitally, um, this could be what we are, are writing on. So we could be using this ourselves just to, just to be talking along. So if I am trying to um, give an instruction or if I wanted to be writing down on my on my screen, something I have, would have to get to switch over to anything on here, and I could definitely be um, just using that to to follow along and do what I and narrate and to summarize what I've been doing. So again, right now, that's just an example of how a teacher, an educator, um, any partner in education who's working with students would be able to use. Um, a jam and to be used a frame to their advantage because right now we're not even involving the students at this moment. We're just using this as a way to um, to give us another outlet to share our our instructions and share our content a little bit and and then be in the moment. 
whereas um, what we might have created on a Google slide would be I'm speaking, but this, the content is already on the slide and I'm just elaborating on it. So in this moment, a lot of people do like to have you know, the marker going or you're adding a sticky note with some, some summaries of it. Um, you could be listening to your students and then this could be used as you know, an anchor chart as you're building something, as you're co-constructing um, some success criteria. There's so many examples as we hear, once we start understanding the, um, the, the tool itself, then we're like, well, how do we really, how do we really use it? And so of course you can just continue um, to move along. I showed before the expand frame bar. And so if I really liked this as a template, um, this one uh, for purposes of today, I'm not sure if I would continue to move over, but maybe I wanted to make a copy of it. I would go up, I would click on it, or I don't have to click on it even, I just have to make sure that I'm hovering over that frame. And you can see that the three dots pop over. Three dots and duplicate. I can make sure that that frame duplicates over and over. And if I go here, I could go to my second frame and uh, just gonna send it back up using collapse frame bar. And then I could go in here by choosing, so right now I'm on, I've kind of stuck myself on a, on a that brush piece. So now I need to reset myself. This was one of the, my biggest parts of learning on here is just like, um, the smart notebook software. You gotta kind of reset by selecting it and then you can grab and move around. And maybe I didn't want this one on here, I could um, delete it and move it off this piece and just change things up that I, I didn't like. And so just to go back, how did I make a copy of this whole frame? I went up, expanded the frame bar, found the frame I wanted to duplicate, went to the three dots and clicked on duplicate. So that was handy. So you're going to see that a couple examples of what I used uh, to duplicate in the um, in the in the examples that I'm coming up in just a few moments. So for this one in my test jam, I've just kind of essentially we've kind of gone over what is available in um, in Google Jamboard and what we can use a jam for and the features on the frames. And so now it's really starting to think about how we can use it, like I just mentioned, and I will provide some. Um, examples uh, of what I've seen people, like I said, and what things that I might do in my own classroom um, using using the jam and uh, the frame options within it. So I'm going to reset, and this is just a single jam board. I'm going to close that up, close this up, and um, show you some examples of what I have done um, in my Jamboard. And I, I do have a workspace open right now to show you that some of these items that I could look at um, are in here, ready, uh, ready to go. And you can locate a Jamboard workspace uh, and put it into your workspace, sorry, for students to make a copy of, of that. So I'm going to show you some examples and I'm going to get back to Jamboard to kind of show you what I have had um, moving in there. And we'll just pop into one. So I'm going to now go owned by me. And I might show um, a different a different list. So let's let's start with something um, simple, um, not simple in, in everything, but just that I'm going to create it and I'm going to put it um, for the purposes of um, a one student maybe showing their learning. And this is not live two way, but it could be. Um, so here's a class whiteboard, and it could be something that I could share uh, with my class. And I started. Um, with it. So because we could be um, on a virtual a virtual learning, it could be, well, somebody has access to it and you just want to share it. And so I didn't spend too long. You'll see how very simple it is to um, create a class whiteboard. So my intention um, with this uh, whiteboard is to have always one ready to go if I needed it in the moment. And by what I mean of that is if I'm working with a group of students or if I'm working with my whole class virtually um, or parts of my class in person or whole class if they all had devices, whatever the scenario is, um, they would have a dedicated slide to them. So if I'm talking to them, like, well, show me, like, are you understanding? How are you feeling today? What are you doing? They would have a dedicated slide um, with their name on it so that they could just reflect and you as the teacher could flip through it. And they, they could technically flip through it, but they would be using their own. So we're kind of overlapping with some features um, in, in kind of what Pear Deck also has to offer in that one. So it's always evaluating the tool that we're looking um, in here. So what I look like for my own 
uh, class whiteboard was I looked over here and I just added a post-it and I put the word name up there. And then I started copying it over and over again. So what I mean by that is when I expand the frame bar up here and I looked across the top, I had uh, I've done Bobby, Susie, Robert, Amanda. I didn't finish the class because I know we have more than um, four people in there in our classes. Well, maybe you don't have anything in your physical class roster at the moment of time, but we will have more than four students. And so I'm going to show you. I'm going to add a frame. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to duplicate this frame, and you can see now I could go in here and um, and put name on here. And this is kind of like a, a master for me. I'm going to click save. And so right now, nobody's name is just name. But for the purposes of today, I can see that up here, I have Bobby, Susie, Robert, Amanda, and name. So I could go and just duplicate. I could duplicate it. I could duplicate it. And I could duplicate it. I think you get the picture. And then I could go back to each frame and just start um, changing it. So I'm going to collapse it. I'm going to click on this one. Um, so maybe this one is Michael. And you can see that as I go through, I can just keep on sharing the names with it. So now I'm heading towards the my end goal of each person having a um, dedicated frame for in the moment learning in this case, because there's nothing on it. I may just want to give them access to the the, the jam, uh, in this case I called student whiteboard up here, and uh, and and have it go. I would suggest that as you spend the time to build up this master of of sorts, that maybe you leave it as a master because if you if you build this up and then you share it with your students and it gets all um, all written on and all changed, then you might have to do it over and over again. And so what I plan to do. Um, and during the session is I would call it um, for master. If I built it up the way I want it, imagine I had all my students in it. I could um, in the moment or ahead of ahead of the the learning activity, I could go up and click on the three dots and then make a copy. It's going to prompt you um, to uh, rename it, and so it can't be student whiteboard master. It's going to be student whiteboard, and it could be whatever you name it. It could be I'm going to student whiteboard uh, webinar. I could call it September fourth. Automatically, I have that copy. I can save it anywhere in my drive, so I know where it is when I go to find it in the drive. But otherwise, we do have the landing page for Google Jamboard. I'm going to click OK. And then now I actually have this. So I'm going to actually be working with this class whiteboard piece. And, and right off the bat, my intention was to get it to the students. So right now, how do, I, how do I get it to the students? Well, there's multiple ways. Remember, our goal is to try and get everything through Haparo Workspace. So I will show you what the options are in here. So open on Jamboard is not one of them. When I click on Share, it is private to only me which is a similar feature that we're used to in all the Google Suite. When we create this, it's not shared with anybody. When we click on Share, you can share this with uh, colleagues um, as collaborators. And you could technically share it with your whole class um, using the Hapara um, email associated with Dashboard. But I'm going to encourage you to flow through Workspace wherever um, you can. And I'm going to click on. Um, Things that I need to uh, look at. I'm not going to make this link to everyone with the AutoCAFA school board, but there is something that you might offhand need is it's anyone that's in this group with the link can view. So our students are not in the Ottawa Catholic School Board. They're in, they are in the Ottawa Catholic School Board student domain. We have those two domains, remember? And so yes, of course they're in the OCSB, but they're in a different domain uh, for their, their student emails and Gmail and so forth. So you might, in the moment, if you're really trying to get this to them quickly, change it to anyone with the link. Then you would have this link that you could get to them. So I'm just kind of being transparent with options for in the moment. Um, this is one way that you could get it to your class. They would, they would click on the link that was shared with them. They would open it up. 
and then they would find their respective slide by going across the top and finding their name and then having access to the tools. And so you could just be saying, uh, write down something or put some things on how you're feeling or, or you know, if you're in math and you're, you want them to start putting show ways um, of 10 uh, or something like that, how many ways can you make 10? Then you can definitely um, get, them, get them to do that uh, off the cuff kind of piece. How would I get that through Workspace? Um, in Workspace, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. So I'm still talking about the student whiteboard. It's a, for this webinar for September 4th. I've gone through one example, like I'm talking during a webinar, I say, oh, we really need a whiteboard for um, our class, and it could be in person or virtual. And you said, okay, I'm going to create one. So having that master um, there is, is handy, because then you never change it, and it's just there for, for the copying for each need. So I'm going to go back to my Workspace. And I'm going to, I just called it a test math workspace. And uh, for today, there's a couple things of how we would get that to, to the student. And uh, we're going to use this option here. I'm going to just open up the link again. I did copy it. I just want to make sure I have the right link. So there is one option. Um, and this is by putting it in the resources or whatever you've called your workspace by clicking on um, Whiteboard for uh, September 4th webinar. And then I could drop the link in here. And I, I'm just saying that you could, but I would prefer, um, just like anything in Google, uh, Google Drive with Hapara, it's better to search through this piece right here. And this way, you don't even have to open the link settings like I was doing. So you can kind of block that from your memory. But you can kind of go in here, and then you need um, I'm going to put student whiteboard. You can see that it is popping up. And put it in here as a link. Or you could put it and click Done. Or you could put it in as um, evidence. But then you get this started. So it depends what you really want. Do you want to sort of collect and go back to it, or just in the moment? So you could put it under the resources as um, an opening. Um, we, did we did share the link. We did have to open it up um, for them to go here. But I'm not sharing it that with them that way. Whereas in here, it kind of takes the permission piece a little bit away from it. And by that, I mean I don't have to go into my whiteboard and change it to anyone with, on the internet with this link can view. Um, so that's one step that you would have to do to get this into a resource here for them to click on and then for them to have access to it. So it seems a little bit more complicated in, in my mind. But if you are comfortable with doing that and then they link in here, we're still flowing through the workspace. But even better than that, you could do, um, again, whiteboard September 4th. But when it's in the resources, when it's in the evidence column, sorry, it does have the started. Um, we're not really going to be focusing on submitted, but it is something where we can get them in quickly and we know that they've accessed it by the started. So it is is helpful right there. So again, I'll do the same process. Student whiteboard. And there's not my master. I want the webinar. Click that. And then I will click uh, done. I've already um, started this math workspace. And I have shared it with my uh, class by publishing it. So I've gone up and published at the top. And I have 20 fake students in the sandbox. Um, and I have one of them named student 17. I'm going to drag this panel in here. This is student 17. And they've access the student dashboard by logging in to their um, school site and into their Chrome profile. And uh, it usually pops up the student portal. This is a K-6 to student portal, but obviously there is there is more. So with this the grades K-6 to um, portal, we can definitely um, look at it and get them to click on workspace and student dashboard. And you can see that the test math workspace that I just referenced is there. And if they click on it, so this is the student view. And here you can see that here is the webinar for uh, the fourth. There are two entry points. Here's the start. And it opens it up for the student. And they will open it up in their Jamboard. And in this case, it does make that kind of copy. It does identify for them because I did put it in as learner. So I will um, catch myself on that um, on live on air that when I created this card, 
I, I did, um, when I put the activity in, and didn't put it in as um, a learner. So I'll show you what I mean by elaborating on that. So in here, I put copy per student. I didn't put copy per group. So if I wanted it to be collaborative across my whole class, I would have put copy per group and still linked it. Um, and so everybody would have been able to access it. But I did accidentally leave it, and it happens, um, as copy per group when I put that, that link in there. So when I now I have students going into this whiteboard um, individually in their own copies. So in this case, I could um, delete this 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 activity, I, and I haven't uh, set it up yet, and I can reset myself. If they clicked on this link and it's open to everybody with the link, I'll flip back into the student view. And because it's open, they could click on it, then they have access. It doesn't have their name up here, so you know that's how I knew right away that it was not uh, it's not a copy because it added the student 1717 name up top, and it was not a copy. Then they could go through and find their slide, and, and there I find Robert as student 17, then I could go in and start looking at what we needed to, to do. But for me, putting it in the card here is very, is very helpful uh, to be able to do that. All right, so that's the student view. And so if we do use workspace, so this is not a workspace session that you can certainly um, put it together and be able to, to look at different examples of that, of how you, what your end goal is. Do you want the students on it? Or are you showing it as a teacher? Are we sharing it in the moment? So they're kind of sharing their thinking. Um, that's something uh, to look at. So I'm going to reset back to my Jamboard. So we're not got so many tabs open. I'm just going to go to Own by Me, and I might flip it around here. So here are some examples of we what some people have using it for. And uh, we did run a session on deep learning um, this, this summer as part of the Summer Institutes. And uh, we did have a, um, a, a, we, a, a bunch of frames, uh, so a jam. And in this one, we had three frames of what does citizenship look like, sound like, and feel like. So we had three um, pieces. And uh, this might be similar conversations that you would have been having in your, in your schools about your uh, 6C, your global competency, and what that means as part of your school improvement plan. And so we were able to throw that out there um, as, as part of what we needed. There was three facilitators, so we did copy it three times, so we each had smaller groups. And then we shared this um, with, our, with our groups in Aparo Workspace. Then they jumped on, and it kind of ended up starting to look like, um, let's see, just open it up so you can see in the preview here that those, those learners were able to pop on and start um, putting their own um, their own sticky notes, their own post-it notes up, moving them around, some put images on and, and kind of uh, some text. We only had about five minutes to start going through these slides. And so you can see that um, in that amount of time, there was some great participation. And in the moment as the teacher, they were all doing this. I was flipping through um, the slides and kind of commenting on them as, as if I was kind of walking around the class, but I was walking through the um, the Jamboard and saying, oh, I really like this prompt, or I really like this, and I, I didn't know who put it um, on there in that in that moment as well. So that's that, that's a that's a caveat too. But in this case, it was an ability to kind of do a, a scavenger hunt, walk about, um, gallery walk kind of things. Um, I just had three different slides in a small group. They were able to access it uh, and be able to start putting some ideas on it. So it was kind of a brainstorming piece. So that was, that was an example of what um, we used it for. And I'm just looking at sort of the time and uh, kind of just bringing some more examples. This is one I did want to show. And um, let's go back to there's so many things going on right now. I, like, I kind of like the preview sometimes. Um, when I'm showing everybody, may not, maybe not, but my normal workflow to go in. So I created this, um, this jam board, this jam. And Student 17 has already opened it up, so I'm just going to go back to my to my template. I think I had a couple going on there, but it's not going to be a big difference um, if it's there. So here, here it is. I believe, yeah. So I would call that for my master. So right now, maybe I was doing an activity um, with my class again, virtually or in in person. Whether they have access to a couple of Chromebooks that block. Uh, or whatever, um, I have an idea of how many ways can you make 10. So again, this doesn't all have to be live. This could be um, 
synchronous, asynchronous. You could they could be doing it on the computer, but then you come back and look at it afterwards because you can access it via Google um, via your Google uh, format, but in Workspace. And uh, the prompt here is how many ways can you make ten? So the student could come in and they could put in um, images, they could put in text, they could start drawing, um, and again they could be doing this just when they're on there uh, on their own time, and then you come in at a later point for um, for maybe some feedback or just a, a quick glance about uh, what it looks like. Here's something that um, you might have on there if you're looking for different uh, aspects of uh, numeracy, and, and this is actually a post-it um, on top, and, and I just all I did to create that sticky note, I should, again, use the word post-it, but sticky note, um, all I did was I just put uh, some under underscores um, there, and I click Save, so when they come in, they could just erase it, uh, and they could say, okay, well, that's, uh, that's, that's two, and then it's, it's in there, and you're okay. So it has that post-it feature, but all I did was put a post-it in there, and I basically went underscore, 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 and had that ready to go, and I moved it, and I resized it, and I just laid it over top of where my equation was um, and my statement. So that was that's something that could be handy, because they could go in and, and do that, but again, you don't have to get them to type it in. They could take out uh, the pen and move it over and just write it on top of it. Um, that layer should go right on top. You can make this. Um, so let me see if I can just duplicate that. I'm going to duplicate. So let's say if, um, I could change the, the statement, but I'm not going to at this moment. I could put in a sticky note and then change it um, to no color on here. There we go, sorry. And then, again, I could just do three underscores and then kind of mimic what's already on there. Just make it bigger. Or I could not have anything in there as well, just spacing. So I could take this out, double click, just go space, 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 and then bring over this piece. The prompt of color, I find, gives them a little bit of clear that they need to do something with it, um, whether the type in it or right on top of it. Um, here it might be, but it just comes to your instructions that align with it as well. And the last activity that I have is how much money do I have? Um, it's a common thing that we have, and so the student might do different strategies of circling them in different colors. You know that we, we do give them the autonomy to look at it. They might take them and they might drag them um, into like type of coins. And you can see that they are overlapping themselves a little bit, but they might be able to do that. Okay, right now I have, um, if I go to my pen, I might say, okay, well, I have right here, and it's, it's not in a nice color, so I'm going to change it into a marker. And there I can just undo it, and I'm going to change it. Okay, well, right here I have five, and that's five dollars in here. Um, they might change the color, do the same thing. Okay, well, then there's, okay, there's three. And that might be their thinking at that moment in time. And then here, they have two. But then they really have to figure out what the value is and what does five loonies mean or one dollar coins and three quarters mean. And then what does that mean? So they're working it out, out on the slide. And then it's just another way for you to gather information um, from, from your student. So now I'm kind of getting into diff just different ways to use it. I could probably continue going on um, for a really long time. And uh, the biggest thing is um, this just allows you to use strategies that you're, you're very probably familiar with in your everyday teaching. It's just using it on, on a platform um, such as Jamboard that you might, might have not used before. So the, the, the new platform, the new software, the new tool may be new for you, but the, um, the Jamboard itself is just allowing you to kind of do strategies and, and teaching practices that you're, you're comfortable with. And I think that's the easy entry point. So I would encourage you to um, keep it simple, um, even if you just use it for yourself to start with. And then um, as you grow and you want to gather information from the students, you can just put it into your workspace and it can make copies. Then you can go out, not in the moment. Nothing's live. Sometimes when it's live, you're kind of it gets a little bit more stressful, so just put it in there, and then you can go in on your own time. So that's in an individual student um, example. And then you could go even further by having them all access it on their own slides. Um, 
in the same jam and then you could be flipping through it as educator and that's more of a synchronous type of activity where you are in the moment trying to gather information or prompting them based on that. So, so many entry points um, depending on your grade level and, um, and comfort with using it. But um, like I mentioned, our um, LT uh, team is here to support as well as so many um, great educators from across the central board departments and in your school buildings that have a lot of comfort with uh, Jamboard too. So ask around, but know that um, on, if you're looking for the LT consultants that are attached to your school, um, here's where I would find them. And I would go to this, the staff portal. Professional learning. It's just on the top there. And I would scroll over to educating students under tools and tech. And in here, there's a couple of pieces, right? First of all, it is, um, these are the, why I came here is your family of schools consultant, so you can email them directly. There is a form on the um, LT page on the staff portal under boards and departments on the left-hand side under learning technologies for a Google form that requests support um, as well, which um, brings it and links it towards uh, many departments that work uh, collaboratively, which is inter interdepartmentally, which is really nice. And then in here, we do have our OCSB how-to channel, but we also have some great resources and tools on here and Jamboard does have some ideas on here. So here's a help and here is using Google Jamboard with Google Meet, which is a video we created um, uh, as um, an LT team on our OCSB how-to channel. And the last resources, like I just mentioned, the OCSB how-to channel. And you can see there's a lot of playlists up here, but you can see there's leveraging Hapara, Google Explore tool, different things that are on here so we can. And ultimately, you can search in here for, for Jamboard. And you can know that there are a lot of opportunities within ones that make sense. Of course, old webinars, not old webinars, all webinars, I meant to say, that we um, put on, like this one. And you can see there is professional development. So there's a lot of entry points to get the support you need. And if we backtrack to the professional learning, we do have Jamboard down here. Um, to get your there, ideas there, um, how to use it with a Meet, and then Jamboard Help, which does bring it to um, the Google piece because they are the company and it's just easiest to kind of have like those everyday questions with the live vendor um, uh, there. So please um, use all these tools and of course use us uh, to support you. So I want to thank you. Um, during this live stream to for jumping in if you were able to and of course it's going to be recorded so share it with your your colleagues afterwards when we when we get that and if you've located afterwards but otherwise i want to thank you for your time again and uh we're here to support so have a good rest of your day everybody